is Coach Your Power. I'm here at Powerhouse Gym in Burbank, California. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm an awesome nutrition sponsor of the athletes. I've been in several magazines, uh, reps, Planet Muscle, Exercise for Men. I'm also a founder for the Body Space Folks Model Search. Today I'm going to tell you how to adjust my training supplementation and nutrition program when I was overseas and also show you that even if you don't have gym access or access to equipment, you can still get your workout going, you can still get your nutrition on track. I was in Afghanistan and I was in Iraq. Afghanistan was a little bit more difficult because we didn't have any kind of equipment whatsoever and the fact that we were the first people on the scene on ground as soon as 9-11 happened, we were literally the first people on the ground. Kind of made, that made it interesting and uh, I thought about how long it took me to get to where I got to and I was like, okay, if I just sit and not do anything, I will pretty much lose the majority of my hard work. So it will be easier to maintain what I already have than to let it slide and then go back home and have to build everything back up again. That was the driving force for me. When you look at nutrition and you look at training, it's pretty much as long as you got some form of resistance, and long, as long as you stay within your maintenance, as far as calorie-wise goes, you're gonna be on track. So as far as resistance, calisthenics works perfectly. I use sandbags, you, you use uh, rusted poles to do pull-ups. For instance, you, you have a sandbag, you could do uh, sandbag swings. That's a great workout because you work your core, you work your shoulder, you're pretty much working the overall body. Or you use the same sandbag and do curls with it too. So if you're using an excuse saying, well, it's gonna be a lot of work, I don't feel like trying to do this and do that to maintain what I got. It doesn't take that much effort. It's only a third of the effort to maintain what you already built on. Now that you know a little bit about me and how I adjust my workout program when I was overseas, now I'm gonna tell you how I got my physique, how I work out today. Most of the movement I do in the gym is pretty much standing. I always try to stand, like everything I do, I try to do standing. And that way I'm, I'm engaged with the core, I'm engaged with my abs. If you look around, as far as like the equipment wise, every, everything requires sitting. Like you sit when you're doing dumbbells, you sit when you're curling, so I try to avoid sitting down. You're exercising, you're not, you're not supposed to sit. I do curls, standing up, uh, shoulder press I do is standing up. All my back routine, for instance, is all pull-ups, all different variations from pull-ups. I rarely touch machines. I try to incorporate as many muscles as I can into each workout. However, the main purpose, whenever you're standing up, is you're using your abs a lot more than you would if you were sitting down. You see a lot of people that do endless amount of crunches and ab work like three or four times a week. I try to do them. The most I'll do abs is probably twice a week. I like working out, so it's five days a week. But uh, it typically involves uh, working the largest muscle groups twice a week. With a larger muscle group, you tend to burn more calories. Your calorie partitioning is better, which means the food you eat is gonna go towards the uh, muscle instead of fat or whatnot. So I start off with legs, because that's the hardest to do. That's when you have the most energy. Instead of doing chest, do, you know, do legs. That's what I always say. And then I do back and shoulders after that on, on a Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, I do something like a chest and triceps. Thursday is usually off. When I take off, I take completely off to let my body recuperate. It's a full on rest day, no cardio, no uh, weight training, nothing. Friday and Saturday, it starts over again where I do legs on Friday, back and shoulders on Saturday. Direct arm work, I try to like lace it in with legs. So I'll do probably like uh, barbell curls on uh, Monday. And then next time I do legs, I do uh, dumbbell curls. If I hit a plateau with my, with my back or if I hit a plateau with my legs, I might switch out the days with it or just, in, just keep on increasing the weight. Just, sometimes you just have to just break through it, just increase the weight anyway. Or another thing to do is just change your rep scheme. So for instance, if you hit a plateau with a, let me give you an example of front squats, you're doing 225 on front squats and you can't get past it. Instead of just backing down or what have you, just do 225 five times with a uh, pause in between. I notice that whenever I don't have a log, you, you just tend to stagnate, at least that's with me. It's a good way too to break through a plateau too, because you look at your last exercise and you did uh, say five reps on that one. So you might try to play with the numbers a bit and say, okay, you do uh, seven sets, three reps of uh, 225, as, as opposed to just doing five sets of five with the same amount of weight. And, and I actually like surpassing the number you did before. Now that you know a little bit about my training program, if you want my full workout program, check out the page below. Now let me tell you a little bit more about my nutrition. My whole approach to nutrition is, at the end of the day, it's, it's pretty much calories in, calories out. You know, if you're eating above your, uh, set maintenance, you're gonna gain regardless. If you're eating below your maintenance level, you're gonna lose. The easiest way to do it is using muscle fires. I mean, 
the U16, if you are a guy with a fast metabolism, 15, if you are, metabolism is average, 14 if you're a woman with a fast metabolism. And that takes into account your TEF, your thermic effect of food, and your uh, resting metabolic rate. It takes account of everything. When I first started working out, I was making gains in strength, but I was making gains in size. And I was wondering, like, what's going on, you know? I'm going stronger, but I'm not getting bigger. It's like, yeah, you're not eating enough. That's why. It's, of course, as soon as I started eating, and my body composition started changing. And that was the first clue, at least to me, about how important nutrition was. I based the number of meals on my the amount of calories I, I had to eat. So to that effect, it's usually about four, maybe five times a day. I used to space them out every three hours. My protein source is steak, chicken, fish. If it's meat, if it's a cow, if it's a, a lamb, I'm gonna eat it, you know, pretty much. I don't, I, I'm not particular. I look at this as a lifestyle. I don't look at this as, as a one-time event or get fit, you know, get in shape once a year. Cause I always, you know, I like to stay in shape 365. I always tell people, try to outtrain your nutrition. It's like trying to outrun a bear. Eventually, it's gonna catch up with you. So it's like, if you're doing all this training, all this uh, busting your butt in the gym and your nutrition is subpar, it's, it's like you're running in place. Cause without nutrition, you're not gonna adapt. Your adaptation to uh, resistance training is not going to be there. Your stamina is not going to be there. You're going to hit that plateau every single time because your nutrition is subpar. If your nutrition is not in line, you're not going to reach your goal. Now, that was my philosophy on nutrition. To check out my full meal plan, check out the page below. Now, on to supplementation. Being overseas, supplementation was a huge role. I mean, I, it's, it's, I'm probably understating how, how big the role is. Even after I got out from Afghanistan, for instance, and went to Iraq, where you had, uh, when you actually have facilities and all that and, and everything, the food was like cardboard box. So it's like many times you, don't, you just don't even feel like eating the same thing over and over. So and you don't have access to like veg, fresh vegetables. You don't have access to like uh, fish, you know, for omega threes and all that stuff. So being able to order stuff from bodybuilder.com and have it come in two days, that was like a lifesaver. I think if I, if I didn't have that supplement, I'd probably be 90 pounds right now. You're not always gonna hit the micro levels that you have as far as protein wise. At least I learned that lesson a long time ago when I, when I hit a plateau as far as size wise. Cause I, I reached a certain point and I still wasn't gaining. So, and then I looked at how much protein I should have. And I was like, I looked at it, I was like, well, there's no way I could satisfy all this with, you know, with the nutrition I have on hand and without, you know, without supplementation. So you know, supplementation fills in that gap. I would have to say definitely protein. If I didn't have the whey or casein protein, I don't think I would have reached my goals as far as, you know, gaining size. Fish oil is definitely, because fish oil, fish oil is probably one of the most underrated uh, supplement out there because it controls inflammation. It's uh, involved with 60% of the brain function. It's a uh, precursor to uh, hormones too. Multivitamin, of course, is essential too. It's like uh, most people always neglect that, but it's, I look at it as like the chair sitting there, but you don't pay attention to screws that's holding that chair together. So the, those screws are the multivitamins. So if you, if you neglect that, that chair is gonna fall apart. So you always don't have the time to supply your body with the micronutrients you need or the micronutrients you, you need. So supplements play a huge role. <music> Check out my full workout nutrition supplementation program. Check out the page below. If you'd like to ask me any questions, check me out on Body Space. My username is Mad Titan. For more content like this, check out bodybuilder.com.